A most warm welcome to my castle, Mr. Kennedy. Who the hell are you? We absolutely loved both the Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes, so we are of course super excited for the RE4 remake coming in just a few weeks. To tide us over until then, Capcom is kind enough to send us some brand new footage of the game in action, which we're going to share with you now, along with our thoughts on how the Resident Evil 4 remake is shaping up. There are some familiar scenes, lots of new mechanics, and it all looks very, very stylish. Bear in mind, this was a hands-off demo, but we will hopefully have lots more content for you when we finally get to play the game for ourselves. Enjoy! So the gameplay starts off with some exploration near the lake after sundown. There's a short cameo by Hunnigan on Leon's radio, and then we're off to find the key to the church. Now, by chapter 4 of the original game, Leon had actually already entered the castle, so it seems like the pacing is a little different in the remake, which is no bad thing. A little more time to explore the village, the lake, and the surrounding area with Leon on his own, ratcheting up the tension and allowing us to soak in a bit more of the atmosphere. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. It isn't long, of course, before Leon runs into some villagers, and we can see the very wet gore the RE engine is so good at in action. As in the original game, shooting enemies in the leg disorients them, and you can follow these up with a melee attack. The parasite's body becomes exposed after certain attacks on the Ganado, after which they become stronger than their normal human form, as well as having much improved reach. A Ganado with the parasite exposed can attack with its sharp tentacles, which, if you're fast enough, can be parried with your knife. A little on the knife, actually. It's one of the ways in which the RE4 remake has been updated to reflect more modern gameplay. According to the game director, Kazunori Kadoi, speaking to Game Informer, this update came from a desire to change the QTE heavy gameplay of the original. Kadoi said, Early in development, one of the things we wanted to improve was the QTE events. QTEs are not popular in today's games. We really did not think the players today would enjoy them, so we thought about what we could implement to take their place. In the original, there's a fight with Krauser, for instance. We thought if we had something like a parry system, we could realize knife combat. Now, from that thought, it seems the team ended up applying the parry as a core mechanic throughout the entire game. In a sense, taking the QTEs of the original and weaving them more fluidly into the gameplay as a whole. To be honest, it also seems to make the knife more interesting and versatile. But while in the original you could use your knife infinitely, it can actually break in the remake, adding a little bit of tension to encounters when you know you could suddenly be without that very useful close quarters weapon. The Krauser fight, incidentally, was one of the most memorable scenes from the original game, but it is true that it was probably in need of updating. In the remake, it looks to still have that intensity and excitement, but you're way more in control of how things are actually playing out in front of you. We can also see from the new footage that puzzles and intriguing environmental storytelling are very much still a part of the RE experience. Leon this? briefly passes through a cave where he can see paintings yeah. on the wall and a shrine at the back where items can be placed. Offhand, we don't recall that specific scene being part of the original game, so it's looking like we can expect some new challenges as we explore, which makes total sense. Another puzzle seems to be related to various symbols scrawled in yellow paint in an area, which correspond to buttons you can press on a plinth that may or may not be keeping a familiar-ish enemy locked up that you can see just beyond that door. Also brand new to the remake are requests you can find out in the world. These seem to be posted up by the merchant, more of him in a moment, and will net you rewards for collecting specific items while you explore, such as this one where you're tasked with hunting down and selling the merchant a gold chicken egg. According to the developers, this idea originally came from wanting to implement a system sort of like the recipes the Duke offered in RE Village, where you'd bring him fish or meat in exchange for certain upgrades. This idea eventually morphed into requests, which do feel more in keeping with the general tone of RE4 and, of course, the merchant. Given the fact that Resident Evil 4 is a game that helped popularize third-person action in games and solidify their dominance in the industry for multiple generations to come, it stands to reason that this remake needs to live up to that legacy with regards to its combat. We already touched on how the knife is going to change things up, but elsewhere, round attacks and Leon's melee finishers and counters all boast new animations and flourishes. Yes, by the way, he does still do a mean suplex. Leon can now stab a Ganado in the head while it's on the floor, for example. Of 
course, enemy attack animations have been updated too, and they are looking pleasingly brutal. On enemy design, it's not too different, but it has been updated enough that everything looks appropriately horrifying. Parasites are all bone and sinew, while heads explode with an almighty squelch in a smoky shotgun blast. RE4 Remake's combat is still definitely familiar, however, particularly with the sense of panic that creeps in whenever you start to get overwhelmed by enemies closing in around you. Thankfully, although they are still able to arm themselves, you can still knock projectiles out of the air with your gun or a knife, as well as shoot away any weapons they're holding, including explosives. So it's kind of inevitable that it would happen, but for fans of the original RE4, it's going to be a little weird hearing the merchant's new voice lines. I've got some new items in stock. He's expanded his offerings from the original game though. You can still buy, sell and tune up your weapons, and now you can trade too. With spinels, you accumulate through completing his requests. There are three kinds of currency on display in the merchant's shop. Pesetas, spinels, and some sort of blue ticket whose function we're not sure of yet. Perhaps they're obtained through challenges like shooting the blue medals in the original game, which by the by do look to be included in the remake as well. You can see one just over there. Either way, the shop is looking very enticing. Don't get yourself killed now. <laughs> in the original, you could sell treasures to the merchant to drum up a lot of quick cash. And some treasures you could hold on to and find missing parts for to combine and increase their sale value. That's still the case here, but the process looks slightly more involved in that you can add gems manually yourself. Like you see here with the elegant mask. This might just be a fun little extra, or maybe there could be bonuses for laying the gems in a correct way, like if you see the mask depicted on a painting or something elsewhere. That's just an idea, but it's fun to see that little evolution nonetheless. Coming through with a similar subtle upgrade, typewriters are of course used to save your game, but they can now also be used to store weapons and items outside of the game's iconic attaché case which you can now customize the color of and add charms to, also a typewriter's. This new feature isn't just cosmetic, but comes with slight perks as well, like a black case increasing the drop rate for resources and a chicken charm, meaning any eggs you consume give you 100% of your health back. I think it's gonna be really fun seeing what other charms are out there. Stick close. Once Leon finally rescues and joins up with Ashley, things get a little more complex. Just like the original, you don't usually control Ashley directly, but Leon can somewhat maneuver her by using the tight or loose commands. The tight command keeps her closer to Leon, and loose causes Ashley to distance herself when things get dangerous. The symbol in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen shows you which mode you have enabled, and it can be swapped at any point during the gameplay. The main goal RE4 no Remix development team said they were keen to achieve was to provide variation on the original game, to make things feel fresh, in other words. When the original was released, it oh, felt very new to play. But copying that wholesale for a remake just won't work now, because obviously, a lot of mechanics and controls and standard industry practices have moved on since then. One example the dev team has given, as something that has now become more of a standard, is giving players options in how to approach any given scenario. So, now, Leon and Ashley are able to crouch and stealth past enemies if players want to try and avoid direct combat and save themselves some ammo. To this end, there is now a bolt thrower weapon that fires silently, meaning enemies won't know where it came from, giving players more tools to do things a different way. The ability to stealth looks like it'll make one memorable fight from the original even more satisfying now too. Everyone, remember the Garador? Yeah, of course you do. Spread out. When things do kick off loudly, they do so in spectacular fashion. This sequence I know will be very familiar to fans of the original. On the castle walls, Leon is fighting through the ramparts while being blasted on all sides by catapult fire. Use red barrels to great effect, but be careful not to let Ashley get carried off or, as before, it is an instant game over. Careful. By this stage, it is no surprise that Capcom knows what it's doing when it comes to the high-quality remix of its most loved games. But nevertheless, it's exciting to see how Resident Evil 4 Remake is shaping up. The original RE4 marked a huge turning point in the Resident Evil series and in games in general. Its influence on modern gameplay really can't be overstated. There is therefore a lot of expectation on this remake's shoulders. In many ways, some of these scenes look so familiar, I know exactly what part of the game they're from, and I feel like I can picture exactly how I'm going to tackle them. 
But then again, it sounds like the mechanics have been tweaked just so that there's a little more room this time around to experiment and try some new approaches. The castle in particular looks gorgeously spooky. The characters have all been given a bit of a makeover, although I'm really not loving Ashley's new outfit, in all honesty. And the often overlooked campiness in parts of the script and in Leon's sassiness also seems to have been translated really well. Honestly, it all looks great. Apart from maybe Leon and Ashley's polyester hair. I mean, what exactly is going on there? Anyway, as mentioned above, this is all based on a hands-off preview provided to us by Capcom. But we're really excited to go hands-on in the very near future, so make sure to stick around to experience that with us. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe, stranger. Bye! Get back here.